the finish line. Hey, the radio big room is far from slow. The lights no longer yellow. Ready, steady, go. Crank it up. Crowds all on their feet, not one bothered by the heat. Imagine them in the driver's seat. And hello again, everybody. Welcome back here to PTM Racing TV, where we're live here tonight. How oh, close to be here in Southern California. We're about to see the drivers of Pedal the Metal Racing League bring out the Xfinity Series right here onto the show for a little bit of Xfinity battling in the season to coming to a close end. Hi, everyone. I am Christian Crusader Shriver. I welcome back to the two-mile-long track here tonight at Auto Club Speedway. The wind holding up. Weather's pretty good out there, but you know one thing. These drivers are not going to hold back when it comes to speed they carry and the battles they rage as we get set for tonight's action. On the pole, we start them off. It's Dan the Man Miglin. The 31 is outside. That's the old Ralph Snake himself, Robert Kahn. Row number two, it's Matthew Hopper, the 84 is outside. Chantel, the throttle bottle in the five. Row three, it's Brandon Pike in the 22 is outside. Wally Babb, the 99. Row number four, it's Jeffrey Todd Tubbs in the 72 is outside. That will be Dustin Sonaker in the 66. And is outside will be Robert Dudley in the 49. Row number six will be Corey Reed in the 27. And outside of him will be Jeffrey Oaks in the number 20. Row number seven, that's going to be... Mr. Nick Kern in the 69 is outside. Keith checkmates Taylor in the 8. Row number 8 is Chad Lancaster in the 02. And then final starter, Christopher Jordan in the 78. Rounding out your field. Race fans, we're getting ready. Here we go. Action here. Let's call this one down. Southern California's Auto Club Speedway. And the Xfinity Series up out of the middle are here to put on a show for you at home. Watching along. Come on board. Tune on in. It's time for some racing. We've got back-to-back -back shows up for grabs here tonight. First up, a pedal the metal racing league in the Xfinity. Of course, as you see right here and now, right after this, though, we've got to jump out of here quickly because we've got a major race coming your way. Caleb Couch Fundraiser with the Sprint Cars Evolution. This is a race that will mean more to folks than you realize and will mean so much to the world. The drivers, they will fight it out with, but we'll see how they handle their nerves as we get ready to go with the Sunny Lap main event here first up at Auto Club Speedway. We've got a big points battle going into tonight here. This will definitely be a close call. Coach Connor and fight ensuing. We'll show you more about that here in a little bit as we prepare to go green flag racing here up on the front straightaway. They line them off down the rack, around the track, and around the straights. Looking for the green to pop on board here. Looking for that green flag pop out. There it is. We're going racing here at Auto Club. Huge start right out of the gate here. They drag race down to the front straightaway here. Down on the turn one and two they go. It's a side-by-side -side battle here in the race lead early on. Dan the Man Miglin trying to hold off the old rattlesnake. Robert Conn, the 21. Gone looking to try to take full advantage of him early on, trying to take his spot away from him. Leading him down the back straightaway here. It's a side -by -side. It was a side-by-side -side battle for a little bit, but Conn taking full advantage of this one. So far, so good as Matthew Hoffert and Chantel Bottle now take it in for a little deep dive into a three wide salute here. That's Brandon Pike on the bottom line. Pike on the very bottom of that end here. You can see Hoffert having drive up a little bit, tags the wall slightly there. We'll have a little bit of damage to work his way off of as Volibab spies an opportunity to make his way around the old five of Chantel, the throttle bottle. Rage, we're opening and suing. And boat drivers leaning straight off on the outside line. Looks like off for the Budweiser's Camaro 84. Trying to hold him down, trying to keep him away. Pike immediately out of the gate, though, just driving in hard and seeing if he'll stick. No issues here so far here. A little bit of movement back in the pack here. Key checkmate Taylor. The easier than the number eight. Have a little bit of a or too. A little fight, if you will, with the Hardy 69. And not the usual way my stomach bites off the Hardy's food around here, although I'll be honest with you, it still tastes pretty good. Even my stomach doesn't agree with it. Coming out at turn four, though, a little problematic there, though, for him. He ends up smacking the wall protection, and now a major opening ensues. Chad Lancaster with a 0-2 sneaks his way on the inside line as Jeffrey Oaks and the 20 does much at the same. Oaksy right now doing a pretty solid, stable job here, hanging with the field, hitting with the drivers here, trying to see if he can make something work and stick here to this one.
This race tonight will be into the finish line. It will be presented by Milgard Motorsports here tonight. We will be giving them the old shout outs here as well, with all our sponsors as well. But for now, anyway, right now, it's all about what battles are rage and the war seats drivers commence as the 84 of Hopper tries to take down an old rival yet again in the five of Chantel's run a bottle. The thing with Chantel and Hopper in the last couple of ways has been kind of a tumultuous relationship. Uh, it was Hofford at Martinsville Speedway that took down the five Chantel bottle in maybe one of the most chaotic and cluster-matic situation races I've ever seen in my life. But it ended up going to the 84 that night despite the five trying to make a last-minute ditch for the run. Looking now onto the back straightaway here. Robert the Ralph St. Con trying to down now. Dan Miglin here. Miglin trying to not sway or swerve too much here. I'll talk more about why he doesn't want to do that here tonight in just a little bit. But the uh, main thing I'm going to tell you, you do not want to lose your tires. Traction is key, and this track will destroy you if you try doing anything else but have good traction on the track. Going on the onboard camera here right now, this is your points leader, bumped by about seven or eight spots here at the points tonight. That is the rubber, Dud -dud Dudley Bill Dudley, the 49 Toyota Supra, trying to rock the old Mercury machine up to the front. And, and, and honestly, still a very tri touching tribute and loving memory of, of old Penny D Dudley out there. Gavin Baker, I was told earlier today, actually had a new tool he said he came out with here. He says that the NASCAR officials were able to give him the, uh, the clear to go. That uh, NASCAR officials, I mean, federal metal officials. Sorry, I wasn't trying to invoke what happened to Elliot earlier. But <laughs> he does have a new tool at his disposal. He told me earlier, he said he, said he wouldn't tell me. But, you know, right now I can see giving a pretty good handling, a pretty good run. He's actually staying with the top spots here. But right about now is when things start to really burn off and burn down. When you get about lap 8, lap 10 on tires here, it tears them up and it destroys them. It can be a bit of a handful to try to handle these turns here. So one thing you're going to see the drivers do a lot of here tonight, they're either going to go straight for the bottom for a bonsai pass for a good run around, or they're going to go to the outside and they're going to try to conserve the tires by not building up as much speed but it doesn't but it doesn't wear and tear the tires out nearly as much. It's a crap shoot and it's a guessing game. And Dan the Man Miglin right now trying to play long run strategy with Brandon Pike. Doesn't seem to be aware of that strategy. He is with the snap on tool 22. Right into the mix of things. He is putting up a fight and putting on a run as he leads him down the back straightaway. Here comes Dan Miglin though up on the on the outside of him, moves his way on the right side, his corner panel looking for the run. And old Revzilla not giving him an inch, not wanting to give him any chances here. He just wants to take him down and knock him down a few pegs. Tremendous speeds as they work their way around the corners and through the battles. You got a four-car battle here for second place here as the Rattlesnake Robert Kahn seems to be in his own comfort zone, or at least he's in La La Land because he is far and away out of this world. Oh, wait, La La Land kind of outdated. What is it, Alice in Wonderland? I don't even know anymore. That's how often I watch TV or movies. It seems like most of my times on our racing, just trying to study and figure these things out more as we go. I don't know sometimes. Take a look at our bass left times right now here for our drivers here. You can just see the difference in quality versus speed. You can see the 4205 by Brandon Pike. He was laying into it. But again, you know, that was the biggest problem is he's laying into it. And he's not really conserving considering what you see like a, with the Chantel Pottle. You know, where she's got a 42.19, and then even drivers commencing like Jeffrey Todd Tubbs with a 42.32. Those are usually drivers that try to conserve and not waste the tires away, much less the fuel, which is another thing around here these drivers are fighting off against. They're having to fight tires and fuel, especially as the five goes up into the wall protection, gets kind of caught up in the super glued area. As they'll take a three wide saloon down out of turn two. Dudley backs off here, doesn't want nothing to do with that here as Wallybap tries to hold him down. Every driver for themselves here as they continue to pace their way through the speeds and through the sounds and the roars of the motors. We're one-seventh of the way through this one now. And it looks like Pike, even though he has been running hard, it looks like he's not having too much trouble keeping up with the pace. Remember, these drivers are working on stages as well, so they can run hard if they want. But when they get to that final stage, when they got about, what was it we got tonight? About 35 laps in total we're going to have on our stage break. That's going to really, about 35, 30 laps, that's going to really make a difference there. Because I was out there practicing right before the show. 
And I'll tell you one thing, as Dudley just makes a huge bonsai dive on the bottom, passing around there of Wally Babb, and now Tao chaining it down, Chantel Bottle. The one thing I noticed right out of the gate was you have got to watch how you enter into a turn, and especially after you come off exit. Doesn't matter if you're on fresh tires or if you're on freshly cooked, burnt in tires. This track eats away at them like nothing. It's a tire eater. It's a monster among drivers and tracks. And it has no trouble giving you a headache when it feels like it. Even Jeffrey Todd Touch, you can see he's getting a lot of speed down there. Starting to build up a lot of momentum here as they work their way back up to the front. Looks like one of them going into the wall. I think that might have been Brandon Pike smacking the wall just a little bit. Packs everybody back up here a little. And that will charge up the field more as we go. But Brant Matthew Hoffer is the only one that has a remote chance of catching up to Robert Kahn. Kahn just looking bad fast right now. Ah, board camera here with Dan Miglin. As you see him going it right on the inside here. Chantel Bottles running still knock him down a few notches. Leading their way down the inside zone. Ooh, a little bump there from the rear end. And the five backs off in the corner. Not trying to hurt his race at all. Trying to make sure both drivers keep a nice stable substance and a speed ability here, and it looks like they are doing just that. And then some. Corey Reed, the number 27, or one of our little friends from the Canadian land board. He is also from from the Rock, as he so he likes to be referred to. It's good to see Reed back here. Unfortunately, last time out, back down in Kentucky, we were not able to get him in the show in the race. A trouble there, unfortunately for him, and ends up costing him precious time. Oh, it's making a cost of precious time. Nearly gets to the rear end there, the 87 of Kevin Baker. Woo, he just got that rear tagged in there, a little bump and drive. It's a contact sport, I'll say that, but yeah, I don't think you want to contact on the two-mile-long track like Auto Club. Cleaner is better, they say, but I say sometimes you're on a short track, but bump and run ain't nothing wrong with that. But this is not a short track. Well, yet, anyway, for those at home that do not know or are not aware of the NASCAR news right now, this two-mile-long track will be no more here soon enough in due time. They are going to transfer this track into a one-mile-long banked-in track. I believe I believe that is how they want to do it. I think they want to do banking just as high, if not maybe a little higher than Bristol Motor Speedway. So, if anything, it's going to be more. Oh, it's going to be more like what you see from, like, Slinger Speedway. And a little bump into Ag there. Chantel spun right down the front straightaway. And Jeffrey Oaks having to go way back in the back here. Got kind of caught off on that line there. I couldn't even tell what the heck happened, much less what went wrong. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PT Miss replay and watch very carefully as they connect with the corner here. Holy smoke, she gave a little bit of a bump and a half there. Got a little bump and a half there and nowhere to go. Watch Oaksy. He's down low. Chantel drives slightly down. No issues there. Both drivers managing to recover and get out of that, but unfortunately for Jeffrey Oaks, same can't quite be said there as caution is thrown out. There is a caution now. Caution is out. Caution is out, and I believe that is the stage break. Now, Jeffrey Oaks is already in the back here, so he does not need an EOL penalty in this case, the race officials are telling me. But he will have a little bit of work to do, as well as Chantel Throttle Bottle will, so... Which one of these drivers can get that work put back into the car and put back into speed? And can anybody knock down the proverbial rattlesnake here tonight? Oh, we'll find out when we come back here to PT Race TV. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's race has been brought to you in part by our good friends over at Green Tech Energy, leading the way in solar energy and solar power for all. Green Tech Energy is a natural choice to use. By A1 Glass Incorporated, serving the Trinity Conception area of Carbonier, Newfoundland, and Canada since 2008. With all your glass needs, services, and quality out of glass replacements, it's what we're all about. By the Butt Kicker, best of performance, feeling on real tracks of the virtual world. Butt Kicker, feel what you've been missing. By Ford Entertainment Group, PC.net. It's matching your want with your wallet with Ford Entertainment Group, PC.net. We'll always work with your needs to build the best PC at the right price. By SimRacingMerch.com, the perfect way to show your passion for sim racing. And right now, i got to believe these drivers are uh, having a passionate race here tonight, a little bit of a passionate battle or two here around this place. It's been tight stuff early on here as we go to our first caution of the day. 
field will rack, stack, put back on the attack here and get ready to sizzle man him out. So while the drivers go into pit road here, we're just going to go and play some up some video commercials here and let you guys kind of watch that. When we come back, we'll see what happens with the drivers and where they place on the restart zone. Don't go there. We'll be right back. Looking for a new PC or an upgrade to your current one? Look no further than Ford Entertainment Group, your home for the best quality and value in new, pre-built, and custom PCs at the lowest price guaranteed. We have affordable PC solutions for any budget, with custom builds starting at $595. Even the pros turn to Ford Entertainment Group to get them up and running. With valued customers from all over the world, it's easy to see why Ford Entertainment Group is the most trusted brand in custom PCs. I wanted to save my awesome subscribers the most money when they started their sim racing journey. Well, I searched high and low for the best deals. And I'm so proud that Jeffrey and I have partnered up so I can spread the good news about where to get the lowest price on a high quality computer. Feel confident when buying from us with the FEG satisfaction guarantee. Get yourself on track today by visiting us online at FEGPC.net. Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. Hey, welcome back, race fans, as we get ready to get back to the action here on the show here. Field ready to work their way down into the track and get this one fielded back into position as we have a little bit of a technical difficulty here. Just a minute here. We're trying to get that little stream refreshed there. There we go. We're ready to get up and running again. Only our first caution of the night. Stage break coming in between. A little issue in between there for Jeffrey Oaks and the number five there. Kind of got caught up in the mix of things here, but the field will work their way back around and put up a little shot, a little bit of a fight here as they work through the front straightaway now to the charge. Face truck comes off out of turn four. That means Robert Kahn and Brand Pike now will have to go out a little bit. Coming right off down across the front straightaway here. Set their pace, set their tone. And field will work their way on in. Dak down on the front straightaway. We're back up and running. Off the gun here, three wide saloon yet again here. Wally Bab right in the middle of that, right there in between. Nick Earn them trying to hold him down, trying to stay in line here. Three wide saloons back on that back straight away here. Everybody hard on the charge. Hard on the charge, hard on the cars. They move their way through the field and it is still Robert Kahn who has the race lead, but up in the back. Robert Dudley, Daniel Miglin, and looks like Ori Reed gonna have a little bit of a showmanship here. Corey Reed still after another win or two, trying to look for more victories on the show. One of the fastest guys out here, really putting on a fight each and every time out. Yeah, man, Chantel of Toronto Pilot definitely representing their their fellow Canadians very well, as well as their uh, fellowship of the Rock, if you will, down in that Newfoundland area. Jeffrey Todd Tufts, much the same. Definitely a tough Tom Brady to beat, tough driver to take on no matter where he goes. He is certainly showing up here tonight and what he can do. 
Chad Lancaster having to deal with one of the drivers from the Rock here as he now moves his weight to the bottom line. Looking to try to get some speed built up and get something works around here. Every driver for themselves here, and it's going to be a long, hard haul for many of them. Then he's just trying to see if they can hold into this position here and try to stay with the runs. So difficult to do, though, and so uniquely balanced. Marla, Scott, Marla Pike coming on board here tonight. Marla, great to have you on board here. As you can see, about three tenths of a second gap there between Khan and the uh, race lead in the second place driver, Brandon Pike, right behind him. A lot of that just has to do with the overall speed and consistency Robert Khan possesses. He's known for being a bit of a fast tracker, a little bit of a sidewinder, as I like to call him, because he literally sometimes will drive that thing sideways and make it stick, basically rotating that car around so perfectly unique. The thing about asphalt racing is around here, you have to be very precise and careful on how you decide the long run versus the short run. And a lot of it also has to do with just how you set the car up. In this case, this being a fixed setup, it takes a lot more courage and practice here as they go three wide, slewing down the back straightaway. Offer kind of caught in the mix of that. He has to back off. Wally Babb going right in between, managing to make it work. Every driver for themselves, as we say on the show, and it certainly is right now. So clean and rhythmic. Everybody just pretty much staying in position for a run, staying in that battle zone. Nobody trying to make any mistakes just yet. They want to keep it clean and solid. To our chopper cam, here you go from three wide to one line drafting here. That's the amazing part about Auto Club, man, is it can change on a heartbeat. You can do them against some speed and some runs. And the next thing you know, you're wishing you could chase that car back and figure out what the heck happened down there. That's the hard part about this situation, this kind of racing here, is just that overwhelming feeling of lack of control and knowing of what's going to happen next once you really put some practice into this track and really know what you're doing. And I and I, well, I've seen so unfortunately done just that, kind of overdriven the car slightly here. He's losing a lot of ground in time as now even the 5 makes, way, makes her way around and even the 0-2 at Chad Lancaster building up some major speed around the corners. Lee Buster Paul saying, so far, so, so far, good racing going, go on, drivers. Rock, come on, go, go, go. Good to have you on board, Lee. Leading their way down across that back straightaway now, it is Corey Reed. One of the drivers we mentioned from the Rock now, trying to make some positions up on Dudley and Pike. And in honesty, I think he's just trying to make up some time, lost time for last week. Not able to make the show and make the cut, and he was so disappointed about that, he said to me earlier today. I have thought about that. You know, I know I'm not in the points race anymore, but you darn sure know I will put up a fight and I'll put a challenge up to any of these drivers if it means getting back into the fray and into the fold of things. He certainly has done that and done some here tonight. By the way, on our end here tonight, just want to double check some here. Is the stream looking okay on your guys' end? No slowdown or any lag like that? I want to make sure we're good on that end because I, I really... Do not want this race to be uh, unchecked and uncut. I want to make sure everything looks good and perfected. I've had my fair share of troubles every now and then with this race, but I want to make sure you guys are still getting a good clean image and a good uh, good running on the uh, frames here. Anyway, back to the action here right now. Chad Lancaster up there with Wally Babb, but right in the back behind him here, you got a little bit of a run here coming from Christopher Jordan in the 78 Superman Camaro as he tries to take on the other Camaro there at Jeffrey Todd Tufts in the 72. Now Jordan, we know him very well as one of the better guys around here, one of the nice guys as well. But he told me earlier that he knows nice guys don't always finish first. But I mean, I told him earlier, it's like, even if you are, in the, you know, even if you're having troubles out there, I mean, the thing is, you're at least making some friends to know when time comes to battle them out. I don't think they plan on giving you the bumper all that much or hurting your chances trying to race well. Well, that is unless you run into a scheme that looks like a Dale Earnhardt's car out there, a la Matthew Hofford. Jerry King saying, looking good to me. Very good. That's what I want to hear. Speaking of looking very good right now, right now I would say Khan by a second and two tenths ahead. I think he's pretty much clean as a whistle on how his night is being done and he's shown. He is just on the ragged edge here. Dan Miglin here was literally kind of a part of the controversy on the very first race of the season at Talladega. He 
was your point. He was the leader going into that final lap there when they had to go across the straightaway. But unfortunately, due to a lifetime issue on the face of iRacing, they actually counted Hofford as a winner. We we kept it with that. But although the points were only awarded for the top three in that predicament, so or, yeah, top three, top five were given the uh, more points, where everyone else was given an even stable balance of points. So. It was a really just a hard decision. I believe the folks told me earlier on they did not want to have to go that route, but because of that timing issue, they didn't want to make too much of a mess of it, and they certainly did not there that night. Key checkmate Taylor now up six spots in the moment. Right now back in the pack here, five down as Chantel the throttle bottle in the five. Has a little bit of damage on that left front corner panel there. And you see on the hood there, you see actually it's kind of raised up slightly. That might have been from earlier on with Jeffrey Oaks when she got tangled up with him there. But it looks like right now Jeffrey Oaks is being very conservative, very consistent on his runs and his speed building here. A lot at stake for these drivers, and they know it too. They've got to really stay in that throttle and watch each corner, each turn as we take it to another onboard camera here at Keith Checkmate Taylor. I tell you one thing, oh, he took Victor getting a little bit up into that wall. I was going to say, one thing I tell you what, he is very conservative and consistent no matter where he goes on any track out there, but that was a big bobble there to say the least here at Auto Club. I can understand a lot of these drivers right now are probably tore up their equipment, probably trying to stay away from burning up anything else around here. But I think there's a point in time where you got to be really careful about that, especially when you go on three wide back on the front straightaway. As we go to the yellow flag, Caution's back out. That is the end of the stage. And I don't think there's going to be anything that needs to be talked about here other than just another clean, solid race battle there for our drivers. We are now going to be halfway through this one race, fans. That only means one thing. When we come back, it will be the final laps here. The halfway points have been reached. 35 laps to the distance. These drivers have been playing with fire for a little bit on the tires. But how can they hold the speed and can they hold the run for the longest part of this track? Because now this is where tires get put to the challenge and the drivers get put to the ultimate test. Which of these will be the best? You find out when we return. Race fans, nice race also presented and brought to you in part by the good friends over at GridFinder. That's the best way to find a new league. Filter a search by race day. Your geographical region, gaming platform, race sim and car class. Eat a broadcast, you're a live a designer. Search GridFinder, the home of online racing. By Matt Mills Racing Team. Best in Xfinity for teams out there are sponsoring and supporting Pedal Metal Racing League this season. If you want to help support Matt's journey, follow him up on Facebook and Twi Twitter and Instagram. And be sure to check out his merchandise line on Facebook. Thank you again to Matt Mills for joining on in. And by Paul's Reps, most affordable designs made at your leisure. Paul's Reps will always bring out the best designs in your library. Last but not least, our good friends over at Melgard Motorsports. Fastest of fast and toughest of nails on any track. Virtual world or real world, Melgard Motorsports is where it's at. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker. The future is feeling.
looking for a new PC or an upgrade to your current one? Look no further than Ford Entertainment Group, your home for the best quality and value in new, pre-built, and custom PCs at the lowest price guaranteed. We have affordable PC solutions for any budget, with custom builds starting at $595. Even the pros turn to Ford Entertainment Group to get them up and running. With valued customers from all over the world, it's easy to see why Ford Entertainment Group is the most trusted brand in custom PCs. I wanted to save my awesome subscribers the most money when they started their sim racing journey. Well, I searched high and low for the best deals, and I'm so proud that Jeffrey and I have partnered up so I can spread the good news about where to get the lowest price on a high-quality computer. Feel confident when buying from us with the FEG Satisfaction Guarantee. Get yourself on track today by visiting us online at FEGPC.net. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now, as we prepare to go back to war here at Auto Club Speedway, Southern California Zone, we are going to be approaching the halfway point this next go around here as Robert the Rattlesnake Con has led every single lap up to this point here so far in this race. Since turn two, he pretty much took over the race lead. He's just been absolutely burning it on the game plan, on the strategy here tonight. But now his strategy is going to be put to the ultimate test. His speed has been thought to be very fast and good. But as I mentioned earlier, speed can only get you so far when the track starts to tear up your tires. And we've seen it before here where just a little mistake, a little bobble costs you dearly. And will that be the same case here now? Our field will work their way around the play, around the track, around the spot. You got five, six drivers right now that have a rare shake and take this one down from Kong. You got Corey Reed, Nick Kern, Dan Miglin, Brandon Pike, Jeffrey Oaks, Chantel Bottle all in the mix. And of course, don't count out the defending the defending winner, race series right now, which is Robert Dudley and even Cindy the Closer Taylor, who we don't have on here tonight, unfortunately. This couldn't be on the show. She said, good luck to all our drivers here, the defending champion. Going to end up pretty much having to call this one a season. And without that race tonight here, as we get back to the green flag, we're back underway. Out of the gate here, the drivers will work their way around. It's turn one and two. Right now, two drivers taking different approaches. That being the con approach and the Corey Reed approach. And then the mix of things, you got the drivers that have no problem putting up a speeder, a bill spilt there. Oh, big trouble there for Corey Reed as he works his way off the corner. We got trouble, trouble, trouble. Big pile up on the back straightaway. Holy smokes, the whole field gets into this one. Good Lord almighty, the whole track just got taken for a ride and a half there. Oh my. We'll have to take a look at the PCMS replay real quick and see this one. Let's watch very carefully here. Corey just barely taps the back end of that back straightaway, gets Miglin. Then the whole field gets in this one. Oh, man. Whole back center of that field just got taken for a complete ride and a 180 there to say the least. Everything was nice and clean up until that point. And unfortunately. Just got sent out of existence. Well, those that escaped to clean are going to have a nice little break. No one have to take a pit road stop here, but good Lord. That was not what Corey Reed had in mind, nor was that what he wanted to do. You can see the damage on that Xfinity. Go crest number 27. That thing took a beating there. Oh, Lord. That is a tough, tough break there. And again, you know, just that's just the overall problem with this place, man. You just, you want to drive so hard, but remember, you got to back the corners up. You got to watch those spots. Otherwise, that car just takes a pounding and a destructive hit. And it can change on a dime so quickly, you wouldn't even know it. You see the damage on the five there. Take a look at the two. He's got a big little bumper kick in the rear, on the right rear side. I think it's damaged up badly there. That thing took a hit and a nosedive. Christopher Jordan managed to escape cleanly, as does Kevin Baker. Jeffrey Oaks and Robert Dudley getting out of the fold there. And speaking of Robert Dudley, it actually now brings me to our little point system here tonight. Let's take a look at the PTM Racing points here. Pedal Metal Racing League points here after race number eight. We're going into race nine tonight here at Auto Speedway. And look at the gap here. Seven points out. Dudley right now holds the lead from Pond. 
That's why Colony is so aggressive here tonight, trying to get in there as well as Oxy and Miglin. They're all searching for a career stake championship race. And again, you know, that's just the power of the Xfinity Series. This is where the seriousness comes into tone. Everything gets put to use. Cindy Taylor and Chantel Bottle going neck and neck this night. Unfortunately for Cindy, she'll lose pretty much a lot of ground from Chantel. Chantel will now move up in the top five, barring any issues there tonight as well. But taking a look at the rest of the field on that end, and you can see here Corey Reed and Nick Kern very much in the same band as well as Key Checkmate Taylor looking for some serious points in a get here. But well, that was just a wild, wild wreck there. And again, Corey ended up going back to the pack here. He's going to have to work his way around the field. Let's have a fresh little cleanup job on that thing. And the rest of the drivers looks like they're not going to go into pit road or maybe deciding not to go into pit road just yet. I don't know how I feel about some of the drivers' strategies here. You've seen the huge damage on the five. I'm not sure why she would not want to go into pit road when the time came or the time chance to be had. But she's going to run it anyway. And it looks like they're going to stay under yellow here. I thought they were going to go into it there. It looks like there's a little bit of trouble down there for Nick Kern. Kern off the pace, off the track. Something seems to be wrong there for the 69. Looks like everybody else in the field is cleaned up and okay. Well, I guess you define okay anyway. It's just, it just depends on how you look at things. Pack style centers out, and it looks like Robert Kahn. I guess I got to add him to the uh, Cone Lines Matter Hater Club because he just took the cone out down at Pitt Road. No respect for the cones out here tonight, folks. Everybody going to the bottom here. They are letting, I believe, Nick Kern. Yep, there he comes now. Here he comes off that back straight away. He's coming back up. Jumbles there for the 69, but he's got the Hardy's machine back out. He's going to try to get his last back. He's not going to get all of them back, though. He lost a lot of time off that. He's down right now about two laps here. That will definitely cost him a lot of time here. And the frustration factor got to be boiling over in Kern's mind, knowing that he had a good shot at taking over some spots here. But unfortunately, due to that little incident there, on that back straightaway, that's what pretty much slowed all these drivers down and made things go right back to a crawl here. So here we go, race fans. Lights are off on the pace truck. This time by, we're going to get ready to hit back to the green flag here. And what looks to be a major battle ready to ensue and ready to go out here. You got to wonder, you know, will things play into their favor and play into their advantage? Now knowing they have a good shot and a good chance to really make a statement and make a change here. Can't thank you guys enough for also tuning on in as well. If this is your first time on the show, first off, thank you for tuning in. And I wish you we got hope you guys will like, follow, and subscribe, share here on our pay, Facebook end. This also will be broadcast over up on our YouTube end. So if you guys want to catch that out, check it out later on in the show here. We do have it up on the uh, PT Racing TV YouTube. So you'll be able to see that and then some here. As we look forward to get back to the action here, we're at the halfway point as drivers prepare to lock horns once more. Robert Kahn right now got to be a little bit more happy knowing he doesn't have to run as many laps to try to serve on the tires or the fuel. That could be the advantage he's been looking for. We marched our way around the front straightaway here. Back them in, back them up. Racks stacked and all that. Let's go back on the attack at Southern Cali. Let's get down to it. Here we go. Roaring off the front straightaway here. So far, so good. A lot cleaner this time. Oh, I had to open my mouth. Oh, no. Oh, no. Big trouble. Count Jeffrey Todd's up, upside down. Flip it up in the corners. We got problems. Oh, man. Are you kidding me? Unfortunately, a big situation popping up there for Jeffrey Todd's host right out of the gate here. 
Take a look at the PTMS replay. This is our drone cam. We actually had it right on the drivers when we were going around. Let's take a look at this one. That's a bit of a tough call there, folks. I've got to say right now, i got to believe that was Kevin Baker that went into that made it a three-wide salute because it looked like Pike was already pretty much ready to get in there. So I'm going to say probably right there and then. We'll take a look at for one more angle here. Yeah, right there. That definitely appears to be Pike was already in the inside. and looks like Baker just kind of got in between there, and Jeffrey Todd Tufts had nowhere to go in this case. So... That will be the call there, unfortunately, for Kevin Baker. That is a tough break to him. So the field will march their way back around here, and Baker is getting word right now from the officials. You've been a naughty boy. Go to the back. Not really sure what I would call a naughty. I would say anything other than that. I think he's just trying to race his race and just trying to hang in there, but that was a big unfortunate issue there and a big hit for him and his team. And that will slow them down tremendously here. So the field now has to stack up again and get things down to business here. It's been a wild, wild night of performance here from our drivers and a lot of hard racing and back and forth action, but unfortunately for some, it's been a bit chaotic to say the least here as well. So as our field gets ready to get things figured out again here, hopefully get cleaned up somewhat and hopefully hang in there with these drivers. Some of them still opting to try to stay out despite some of the damage on their cars here. I'm kind of I'm kind of trying to figure out this, the scenario here, what they're trying to do here. Audio errors on my end here, guys. I do apologize if you're hearing that on your end there. Not sure what that's coming from exactly. That seems to be gone now, so I think we're okay here. Looks like we're ready to get back to the action. I'd say I hope those old witchcraft and gremlins weren't showing and pesking their ugly heads around here. We try to keep rid of try, I thought I exercised those demons and got them out of here when I had the chance, but apparently not. Apparently they want to still hang around here a little bit, so. But anyway, guys, we've got 28 laps left here to go here of this race. And what about 30 minutes left until the big show here tonight as well. The Caleb Couch Fundraiser presented by Lone Star Racing is coming your way right after this. But we're getting back to the action here with Pedal, the Metal Racing League. Xfinity Series bring to the table, bring to the show. We're back up and running. Let's get back down to business. And Jeffrey Oaks with a move of the night. Gets a big run there. Con having to back off the course. Looks like he might be trying to save his tires up a little bit more now. 
Oh, he's dead sideways there. You can see that thing just swaying right to the right side. That thing is literally sideways going around at turn two. Somehow gets it to rotate in. Beautifully done. He's just hammering the throttle. He was literally, instead of being a usual good to good angle in the turn, he literally was about a 90-degree angle shooting off around. That rear end was swinging out from behind. Trouble there for Sense out of the throttle bottle. Had a turn three and four problems yet again. Caution flies. Caution's out. Let's take a look at the PTM Instant Replay and find out what happened here. Take a close look at this one, folks. Looks like coming around the corner. Flyback just gets a little bit. Ooh, oh! Corey Reed, ouch! Oh my, Corey Reed literally wall riding around a Wallybab. Getting a little bit, and Chantel getting a big bump of that as well there. We'll take a little look at it from this one here. That was a wild little wreck there. Can't quite tell from our angle what we saw there. We'll take a look at it from this angle. Big wreck there, unfortunately, getting all drivers loosey goosey and out of control. Why well, Bab getting told right now? Gonna have to go to the back here. So field work their way back around the track here, get things settled back down, and we'll go ahead and uh, get the technical difficulties out of the way here. I'm still just trying to deal with these glitch crap and gremlins popping up from time to time. So our field will work their way back around the track here and get things settled back down in. And we'll see how this one plays out right here, race fans. We'll come back after a quick commercial message here, but don't go anywhere. Still not done with this one. All race fans, tonight's race presented and brought to you in part by our good friends over Green Tech Energy. Leading the way in solar energy and solar power for all. Green Tech Energy is a natural choice to use. Hi, A1 Glass Incorporated, serving the Trinity Conception area of Carbonier, Newfoundland, Canada since 2008. With all your glass needs and services and quality with all your uh, auto glass replacements is what we're all about. By the Butt Kicker, best in performance and feeling on real tracks of the virtual world, the Butt Kicker. Feel what you've been missing. Hi, Foreign Entertainment Group, PC.net, matching your want with your wallet. FEGPC.net will always work with your needs to build the best PC at the right price. By SimRacingMerch.com, the perfect way to show your passion for sim racing. By GridFinder, best way to find a new league, filter search by race day, geographical region, gaming platform, race sim and car class. Need a broadcaster, live or designer, search GridFinder, the home of online racing. By Matt Mills Racing, best Xfinity team out there sponsoring and supporting Battle of the Metal Racing League. And if you want to help support Matt's journey, follow him on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Be sure to check out his merchandise line. By Paul's Raps. Most affordable designs, made at leisure. Paul's Wraps always bring out the best designs in your library. And by Melgar Motorsports, fast to fast and toughest of nails on a track, virtual or real world. Melgar Motorsports is where it's at. All right, folks. Well, you've been waiting for this one for a little bit now. We got them set up, ready to go back to the action here. Field will march their way around the track to get settled back in. We still got a few laps remaining in this one here to go. And a whole lot of battles to engage and, and persuade with.
Bring it back to the green flag here. Bring it back off the start, and we're back underway. Riding him off the corners here. It's now looking to be a bit of a battle between the men, between the boys here who've been always up in the fights, up in the runs here, no matter where they go and where they're at. They seem to love doing this and really giving it everything they got here. Coming off the corners here, Jeffrey Oaks now looking like he's got a big run coming up there for Robert the Rattlesnake Con Con trying to hold him down there on that back straightaway. Leading him in now, Dudley and Keechuk Taylor also in the hunt in the pecking order. Every driver for themselves, every every battle swaying their way. It's a hard fought shootout here as Dudley looks to sneak on the inside corner panel there of Jeffrey Oaks in the 20. No harm or foul there, but it looks like he took me Taylor even also in the mix of these things. Every driver for themselves here, and Spike coming off that pit, off that little situation in the back there, they're going to pretty much start right back where they were at earlier. Wally Bab right behind the number five. And right into a bit of a three wide slew down on the bottom end of this one. Trying to close in the five, trying to back down, trying not to get in the 22. They clear the three wide. Oh, that could have been some right there, folks. Coming off that, clutches that corner. We've seen these three wides work, and we've seen them not work out so well. That time it did, that time it cleared out pretty well there. Corey Reed right now trying to stay in motion, stay in position. Nick Kern looking to charge up quick, trying to build some speed back up from earlier as well. The last wind down here with only 21 laps to go. I guarantee you these drivers will either have to go into pit road eventually or they're going to be really watching those tires because they don't know when the long run or the short run will pop up. They just know they can't overshoot and they can't undershoot it around here. Chad Lancaster, that 0-2, trying to keep the Goss professional torque equipment machine up ahead there as Mike and Corey Reed look on from the sideline. Strong battle up front, strong battle in the back. Robert Kahn still holding down the field, but the problem for him is Robert Dudley with his main race they have left. If it was literally one, two, the whole rest of the season for those drivers, Dudley would actually beat out Kahn. Be yeah, by about a mere points or two, but it would be theirs to lose. Jerry Key saying demolition derby down Auto Coast Speedway. Well, yeah, right about now, I think they need to demolish it. Right about now, in my opinion, they definitely should demolish it up and see what they can do with a what a mile long with a mile long track that looks like Slinger Speedway. By the way, I racing. If you're ever watching this, when are you guys giving a Slinger Speedway already? Come on, how do you not have that track in the sim? And for those of home that don't know anything about Slinger Speedway, just go look up uh, SRX there on YouTube. Just watch it, and you'll know why I say we need to have that track. That is the definition of why we need more short tracks in the NASCAR world. I am not kidding. It was as a phenomenal race that night. Corey Reed going to go side by side. The fight goes down with Nick Kern and him. The Hardy 69 seems to be slowing up a little bit more. Judging by the times wise here and the speed he's carrying. Right now it looks like about 186 versus 189. Nick Kern that last time around with Corey Reed. This time really building up a little bit more speed. And I think that's actually working in his favor here. They were dead even on that one. All, even right behind him with the Chantel throwing a bottle. 188 miles per hour in the straights and on the back end. They were blistering with the speeds there. But again, that it's just a risky run. You have to be careful about that because you're burning up the tires as much as you do that. And it really just tears up your car and equipment and that can end up causing those spikes, no pun intended to Brandon Pike, on the, uh, the runs out there and also the damage. Well, your points leader right now currently looking to try to take down the old rattlesnake, Robert Kahn. 
trying to hold them off, trying to keep them away from taking this one over here as they march their way through the field. You can just see how close of a tight points race it is here. Khan and Dudley have been back and forth with that this whole season. Khan just unfortunately falling victim to some wrecks and some earlier consequences on his own behalf. And now it is Dudley who sneaks his way on the inside here. It looks like pure consistency and control starting to play into a strategy in its favor here. Time's running out here, and it looks like this might just go to the Dudleyville camp if he can make his way around Khan. Khan trying to hold him down, trying to hold him off. It's a side-by-side -side fight to the end. No, either one of these drivers want to give an inch. Neither one of them care who gets the better of the other. They just want to beat each other out on that last lap. But they sure don't mind putting up a little fight while they're at it. On the outskirts, on the inside line, Dudley and Khan, neck and neck, back and forth, right around the corners, around the edges. Neither driver giving an inch here, to say the least. Back of the outhouse, Pike and Chenta, Pike and Pottle going out a little bit. The throttle trying to stay in line and keep up with the speed of the trap while they back right in front of her. Right on the outskirts here, this could be another three wide salute, and Norm, and then saying here, initiation, there it is, three wide salute, and now it's earned four. Bike in the middle, trying to back it down, trying to not get down low there, oh no, no, it's always going for it, four wide salute there for a brief minute. Oh, he was seeing, and maybe it was an opportunity to take that one over, but he decided to opt out of that, and go stronger down to the bottom line here, makes a run for it. Getting word right now from our friends down in Little Star Racing. They are preparing to engage and getting ready for the race coming up. We'll see it here in just a minute or two, but right now we still need to finish this one out. Robert Kahn now, strategy has to come into pit road. He has to send it down there. They're running out of time though. They gotta be careful. They've only got about, ten, they've only got about 20 minutes left on the clock here with this time here. They've gotta start really pushing the power up, pushing the momentum down here. So far so good, but it's gonna be Dudley and Oxy that have the last say. Oxy on the inside line, charging up from the back straight away here, up to the high side he goes. Dudley trying to fight him back. Jeffrey Oaks has yet to win this season, and a win here tonight would not only help cement his name into the books for season five, four, but also it would help him get a big advantage going into the next series of races because he has a shot at possibly taking the points lead away if he can get more ground on him. And right now he is doing that and then some. Corey Reed right now up on the front straight away here with Kevin Baker right in front of him. Baker trying to give one last gas, one last push. I've got to be honest with you, I'm pretty impressed by the 87 tonight. He's been thoroughly in this hunt. He's been battling hard all night. And right now he might actually just have a shot at taking some of these guys down. Whatever tool he got down there, well, I'll be ding. It must be working. Khan now having to sneak in between. This might not be the situation to do it. Oh, three, one, four, three and four. Oh, they somehow got around that one. I don't know how they cleared it, but they did. Oh my goodness, that could have ended in whole nonsense and madness there. They snuck their way by the corner in the inside zone and ended up working perfectly to their advantage. But Corey Reed is your race leader right behind him though. Fellow Rock member, the, Sh the Farrell Chantel Bottle, ran a bike right beside her. The field works their way off from pit road. Now pit strategy is really going to play into effect. How long do you stay out and how long? I tell you, off to go in for the big pit road. Madness all around us here. Man, it's been a hectic race. Say, at least even Dustin Sornaker, he knows a thing or two about literally being the last man standing. He's done it before on the show. Corey Ray with a 2000 I rating here. That's pretty good for his B class license. Try can take down some of the best there and Robert Kahn, Brandon Pike, and even Jeffrey Oaks and Robert Dudley. And what a show he has been putting on. Even Christopher Jordan's gonna have a little bit of a say in here. He's up in the top four right now.
But again, did, is the long distance going to be for the fuel or is it going to be for their tires? That's what I'm trying to figure out at the moment. The five does enter into pit road, though. Ten laps remain here, and it is looking to be a shootout. Which one of these drivers will be the one to claim the shootout prize and claim it all? Remember, in just about 15 minutes, we're going to be going over to Lone Star Racing. If we have to, we will not cut the stream here. We will leave it up, and we will shoot it back down over to the next race. So just be aware of that, folks. If that happens, we will have to cut off for a minute, but we will still be live. So just be very, very aware of that here. I really think Corey Reed's going to try and last out the entire run here, folks. I, I don't know what else kind of strategy he can think of, but he's trying something. Let's take a look at our strategy here, and this is how his pit roads look. He definitely went in for a long pit stank there in that last stop. He's either got two things in mind here. He's either going to go for the extremely long run on the fuel and then maybe only take two sets of tires, or he's going to have to go into pit road and get some top fuel and take no tires because right now, the way he's looking, Brandon Pike is literally right behind him. And about nine seconds back is Christopher Jordan and Dustin, and 14 being Justin, Dustin Swanaker. With the whole rest of the field either being a lap down or close to it, trying to catch up to the ends of the field here. It's all, it's all give and go or take and break or break. And Corey Reed seems to be knowing that all too well here. Time is running out here as they work their way around. Eight laps to go. Key checkmate Taylor up on the outside bank here. A little runoff there on Wally Bad looking to take over for the ninth spot. Checkmate though not able to hold it in. Bad man just to hold him down here, giving a good runoff on that one. Side by side, they fight it out here. The field looking to try. And end this night on a high note, trying to end it on a big note here. Corey Reed trying to end on the best kind of note, win the race. And right now, I'm going to tell you something. He's not caring anymore. He's going full distance. He doesn't care if the tires last or not. He's going to go full distance. He's going for the final seven. Now, right now, the one he's got to watch out for is not the guys behind him in fourth. It's the guys behind him in fifth. Right at this moment, Khan... About three, four seconds back, Corey Reed is taking it very, very gingerly through the turns. Now you're wondering, probably at home, why is he only going about 184, 180 miles per hour? Even Dustin Slanker is only going 169 miles per hour. You got to remember something. The tires down there are tightening up. They're getting really hard to handle and master. And honestly, if you can't get that car to stay in line, stay in bounds, it hurts you for that long haul. We've seen it here before, though, where a lot of drivers try to go for fuel strategy or, or tire strategy. And stay out as long as they can, only to fall victim to the struggles and issues later. We saw it back in the Fast and Fun Cup Series, back when Million Man Jr. and even John Thacker and all, and Steve Clegg and all of them, they had literally, out of turn four, pretty much stayed in the whole pack and tandem drafting, trying to help one another out, trying to help each other keep the fuel and the distance at bay. But unfortunately, they would end up losing a lot of time and ground. After that while, and then all of a sudden they would run out of fuel, whereas the others that didn't run out of fuel, they managed to finish it out and call it a night. Kind of Crawford saying Fish Drive is going to be one wins tonight. It is indeed, and Corey Reed thinks he's got the winning solution. Final five laps, he's not. If he goes into pit road, it's over for him. He's done. Twenty-two. Brandon Pike is giving it everything he can and then some here. He has fought for this moment. He has fought so hard to get to this night, to get to this opportunity. Is it enough? Brandon Pike is right there in that hunt as well. It could be anybody's guessing game, anybody's chance here. Pike is getting up there. Reed, Reed is trying to hold on and the final four laps will show it. Remember, right after this, we got to get out of here. We got to get over to Lone Star Racing here. Pike is starting to catch up here. He's going to go for it. He's going to just, he's saying it's done. We're going for it. He's telling the guys in the in the shot right now, he's going for him. He's got a second and a tenth to catch to Corey Reed. And you see how gingerly he is coming off those corners, coming off that run. Reed knows what he's up to. He's trying to hold it down by going to the bottom, keeping away from that draft line. 
That draft is now going to be the saving grace for Pike, or it's going to be the disaster for Corey Reed. One way or another, it's going to go either way for him. Reed knows he's got to back it down just a slight bit. The fuel's in trouble. I can see him slowing down hard, very hard here. That fuel is in danger. It is literally almost at the peak of going empty. Pike's now going to catch right up to him. I think Reed might have just ran out. I think my, Reed might have just run out a little bit of fuel. I think he has now just about had it. Pike is giving everything she's got, though. He wants it. He really wants this one. But here's the thing. If they mess up, honestly, Christopher Jordan or Justin Sonaker could literally take this one from him. Or I should say, if maybe there wasn't somebody also leaning in the distance, five seconds behind the rattlesnake. And just look at the speed he carries through these corners, my friends. He is in a hot shoot, hot lead foot moment here. Jeffrey Oaks on the inside of his corner panel. Oaks, he now taking it over. And I forgot all about Jeffrey Oaks. He's on the lead lap as well. Both drivers now in a little bit of an issue situation as two remains. Does Reed and Bike have enough? They've got to get around two more times. It's going to be close. The fuel is there. The f at the same time, it's not there. The tires are definitely gone and blistered and beat to heck. But they want to give it everything they have and then some. Ladies and gentlemen, down the back straightaway. Pike is only, only nine tenths of a second back behind Reed. Reed is giving it more fuel and power on the back stretches. But again, if he runs out of fuel, that thing is going to slow down and stop on him at a dime. And it looks like it might just do that. It did. Reed is going to pit road and so is Brandon Pike. Does Jordan have enough? Does he even have enough fuel? Oh, it's not enough, is it? He's got to go in too. He's going into pit road. White flag is out. Jeffrey Oaks has the race lead. Cons four tenths of a second back behind him. They all head to pit road. The white flag is initiated. Oaks and Con will battle for the win. Unbelievable fuel strategy and pit strategy coming into a great effect in a big moment. Situation just popped right up in between. Khan has got to get one last big run on Oaksy if he wants this one. Robert Dudley is right behind Khan. He needs to get the win here if he can. I don't think he's going to have enough time. Down on the final turn three, turn four. Well, call what you will, but we know this. Jeffrey Oaks is going to take it to victory lane at Auto Club Southern California. Sees Oaksy win it. Down at Auto Club, what a race and what a finish. Holy smokes. Con second, third to Dudley, fourth to Matthew Hoffert, fifth to Nick Kern. And race fans, that rounds out your top drivers in the top five. All right, well, guys, I'd love to stay in chat, but we got a little bit of a problem here. We need to get going. We got to get going to the race here for Caleb Couch Fundraiser. So, folks, don't tune in anywhere. Stay with us. I'll be right back with you. We got to head out there. I'll see you here in just a little bit.